Talk about plumbing nightmares. Holy cow. Hey, folks, the Mac T. Remembered, like, subscribe, join Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, hey, give me that thumbs up on this uh, video and all the other things that I do. So help me out and uh, let's get back to the video. Yeah, plumbing nightmare. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, this uh, 2019 Ford Edge EcoBoost titanium model, uh, all wheel drive, all that good stuff is a bit of a plumbing nightmare and let's uh, see because I'm talking coolant now the traditional uh, drain and fill is just a wee bit tougher to do than on the 2011's 2007's to 2000 uh, uh, what do you say the 14's far easier far more forgiving but the uh, 2015 plus, especially the 2019, has a whole lot of other plumbing issues to go with it. So we are going to take and go over what we're actually going to be working on and see why it is going to be a wee bit more difficult. Oh yeah, we got a whole bunch of issues going on with this. Now keep in mind, the, uh, the 20 or 2007 through the 2014 3.5 and the uh, uh, 3.7 Duratec always had a pretty simple system. We had a heater core for HVAC system and then you had your radiator, your water pump and uh, that, that was pretty much it. It cooled the engine, heater, radiator, simple simple system. Uh, nothing else going really any place else. Uh, but now that they got the 2015, especially on my 2019, uh, you have a whole world of other issues. Now, besides the coolant types, Ford has changed their mind more than my wife does. Uh, <laughs> I love her, but holy cow, Ford has definitely changed what coolants they want to use throughout the years. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a whole other issue. I'll do a video on here very shortly. But one thing that I have found is the we got a plumbing nightmare. And maybe a standard drain to fill is not what we need to do because what I'm concerned with is air pockets the more lines the more places you got the coolant going the higher the probability of air pockets so let's take a look what we got now first thing we got as you can see is you know right up in here we're gonna have the uh, HVAC system yeah the heater core uh, that's gonna be all down in there and everything and causing all sorts of uh, issues when you drain and fill because you got to make sure that's open when you do a coolant change or a coolant flush so you have to make sure that is taken out of there and then of course we have the uh, gas bottle as far as the coolant bottle goes and then we have the radiator which we have right down through here and all the associated coolant lines that go with it now on top of it we also have some other items that we have to worry about when we're going through here. Some uh, issues you have to worry about are down below. So let's go take and check it out. What we got to make sure that we uh, are understanding our plumbing about as far as uh, coolant. Now uh, I don't think you can see it real good, but as you can see, we also have to worry about the turbo because the turbo is actually cooled and that does cause us some uh, other cooling uh, plumbing that is going through there. So with your turbo going in there, you have to make sure that you don't have air pockets in there. Now this is hard to film getting in there because it's very, very tight. But the PTU right here, uh, mine I don't believe has a cooling on it, but some of them do have cooling lines attached to them. This is of course a temp sensor for the uh, PTU, but uh, there could be a cooling issue that uh, some other models may have, uh, especially the police interceptors. They'll have a PTU cooler line hooked up to them to help keep them cool. Uh, other things that we have to worry about is this bad boy right here. You guys see that? See this thing right here? Yeah. 
You know what this is? This is a transmission heater core. That's right, coolant goes through there and it heats the transmission up to achieve a temperature, an operating temperature, in a very short period of time because it is directed to this heater core and the heater core for the inside cabin directly from the engine. Then once it achieves the temperature it needs, then there's a bypass valve that is associated with this that shuts this off and then it reverts to the actual AC condenser transmission fluid cooler. So again, you got fluid coming in here for your uh, fluid transfer as far as uh, coolant and you know this has to be purged out too and that won't be too much of a problem because it's so low I doubt anything will drain out of it but you still have to you know make sure that everything gets flushed out so then again we're also looking at achieving what temperature we need to be at to open bypass valves and everything else when we're doing the coolant otherwise you will really not change all the coolant and that leads into other issues too but eventually everything under operating temperature will reach it and it'll all fully circulate but uh, that's just something to be aware of now one way to uh, help do the uh, coolant change is to have a cooling system air evac kit yeah this is an OEM uh, tools for professionals uh, don't I'll put the link down to Amazon where I got it but uh, essentially this is what the kit is you got the plastic hoses that are hard because the you know the vacuum vacuum gauge your adapters and then of course your valves and everything that you got to install and the instructions come with it now what this essentially does you drain the coolant then you then you button everything back up you take the cap off of the coolant bottle you just take and remove this right here and then you put that whole device with the rubber plug down on top of here get the vacuum going and it vacuums the system out after you drained it and it forms a vacuum and I'll show you how to do it in a video but essentially you have another tube once you got a vacuum created it sucks the coolant or water whatever you're gonna put back into the system and then you've replaced it all so I'll show you in the video how it works but the reason I'm showing you this is because this is the only way to get the air bubbles out to, to make sure the system is actually filled due to the complexity of the plumbing and uh, I mean a drain and fill would probably work but you have to be aware that you could end up with bubbles in there and air pockets that can cause systems to shut down if they overheat and things like that so you know it is a higher technology en engine and uh, the EcoBoost has definitely got the power to go with it but with it comes complexity and uh, as long as you know what the what the issues are you can then plan ahead and make sure that you do the coolant flush appropriately uh, using hopefully the right tools now I'm not saying you can't do a drain and fill I'm not saying that I've never done it because I'm going to use this system here to create a vacuum and then do the flush that way. So I'll show you how that works. And uh, I'm sure others do just drain the fills and work perfectly fine. And uh, maybe I'll do one in the future. But for this time, we're going to go ahead and use that tool to do our drain and fill and uh, change out this orange coolant. Well, that's really what I was just trying to cover here on a pre-flush uh, review before you do your coolant change out on your 2.0 EcoBoost uh, plan ahead make sure that you have it make sure that you have everything you need in my case you want to make sure you have all these things I use distilled water and I use the Peak 10X as my replacement for the orange and it will work perfectly fine but when you buy water I think I got 12 gallons there, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 gallons, which should be sufficient to do the job. I wouldn't try to flush a system out with anything less than 12 gallons. Uh, if you have anything left over, hey, you got drinking water or something else you can use it for, but I always start out with at least 12 
when I do the coolant flush. Hey folks, that's pretty much the review on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the video and, and go and uh, change the coolant out. So stand by for that video upcoming soon. And uh, if nothing else, like, subscribe. Hit the like button on the videos. Help bring me up in the list because uh, every like pops me up higher and higher on the list and definitely helps me out there. And also subscribe. Uh, Mac T Garage is the only Ford Edge website uh, that was created privately by uh, myself and others to help all of you. So visit MacTGarage.com. That's right. It covers all the Ford Edges and everything you want. Parts, uh, manuals, oil testing. It is a one-stop shop. And also for, 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 Mac T Ford Edge Facebook group. Make sure you like and join that group because it is always growing and always accepting new members. Uh, Band of One's got some great music. Mercy Girls always got one-liners and my feet hit the floor today. I'm having a great day and I want you to have a great day too. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.